hello my gorgeous friends on the internet how you all doing okay so i'm back with another exciting tutorial so today we'll be looking at flutter wave and i'm i'm going to be showing you guys how to integrate flutter wave payment gateway into your flutter application the previous um, payment gateway i integrated was the paystack sdk so i have a video of that so you can check in my video collection in my channel to 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 see that and check it out okay so today we are just going to focus on flutter wave and i'm going to show you how to uh take receive payment using your bank account using ussd and also using normal bank transfer inside your flutter application okay so currently now i'm in the flutter wave website yeah so this is actually a landing page and you can see is the easiest way to make and accept payment from customers anywhere in the world so if you can if you ask me which one is better between flutter wave and paystack i can't really differentiate those stuff okay so you just have to try flutter wave and also try paystack and see the one that gives you the solution you want okay then that way you can decide which one to go with all right okay so now let's see how the first thing i need i need to do is first of all i'm going to create my account mm. Okay, so I want to believe you already have a Flutter Wave account. If you don't, just click on create account to create a new account. But if you already have one, just sign in. Okay, so I have already signed in to the pay Flutter Wave uh, dashboard. And currently, this is my dashboard. And you can see this where the test, okay, the test payment, which I did. I had to check if this stuff was actually working. And it's actually working. And you can see I'm currently in test mode and uh, if i want to switch to live mode test mode is normally for development okay so if you watch my play pay stack uh, integration i actually explain most of these stuff okay so if you're in live test mode you're actually in development mode so you're testing your stuff and all the stuff so once you are done with your integration and you have deployed your application you want to switch to live mode so that you start receiving live payment so you just click on live mode or you just click on the switch to switch to live mode i believe there are see other things you need to okay right now you're in live mode and it's just going to reload some things for us to take us to the live mode page all right well currently since we are actually and you can see my transactions there is nothing here because i just changed to switch to live mode and i've not received any transaction okay so i just go back to the test mode because that's what we're go we going to be working on all right so while this is loading i'm going to go to my we're going to build our application right now so what i'll do i'll open my terminal so this is actually the directory i want to see store the i want to create the project in so i'll just create flutter create okay flutter with app and uh, hit enter and just let this stuff to to build all right so just a few seconds we should be done all right so we are done okay so right now i'm going to change the directory to the flutter wave app okay directory and once i do that you can list the files inside so we can open it with our vs code and i can exit this stuff right now so it's just going to wait a little bit uh, for it to launch in vs code all right so we have vs code opened and you can see this is our flutter wave app and uh yeah so if you go to my prospect.tml file i don't have any dependency here okay so just the cupertino icons so this is just a fresh application which you create which you get whenever you create a flutter application all right so but before i start integrating the pay stack stuff i need to uh first of all build this app and then just create the ui for us to see all right so let me just run this app real quick okay so our app is currently running so let me bring up the emulator so i'm actually using my physical device and i'm actually and uh, showing my screen here using vice so this is all right so now let's see let's just be the simple ui so i'm going to open this stuff okay let me just uh minimize it a little bit okay so that you can see what i'm actually doing as well all right like so so now right now we have the simple app so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna delete the whole of this okay so because i want to build the stuff from scratch 
so I just have import okay material okay like so and uh, the first thing is to have the main uh, run up okay so I have my app so first and first is gonna be a stateless widget and I have the app so here I'm just gonna return the material app okay then we have the home so the home is just gonna be the home page okay like so all right so now we can just create a states full widget height here so i'm just going to do everything inside one class okay for simplicity and for you to easily understand it okay so i can just go with home page all right so that's the home page of our application okay so i can do a hot restart now and it should show blank because we don't have any scaffold widget here but let's see okay so just a blank page because there's no scaffold widget so let's just replace the stuff with the scaffold and uh, save it i uh, should show white now yeah okay so abba and i have this to be okay so now it's time for us to be the body so the body basically just gonna have some feeds so the first feed let's say we want to get the amount that the user wants to pay okay the feed we are going to have a test form feed to retrieve the amount and then secondly we are going to have a test form feed where the user can put in their email address and as well if we want their phone number they can put in their phone number okay so let's just see if we can get those three feeds ready all right so what I'm going to do is just to create a body and I will use a stack widget because I want to position the payment button to just be at the bottom here. Okay, then the rest can just float as they want. All right. So we have the stack widget. Like so. And it has a children. Okay, first let me create the button. And which is going to be a container. Okay, so let's see i can just give it a test uh actually a row should do it because i want to use an icon and also a test okay so just give it a child of row like so and uh, children nope okay so first thing first we have the test okay mm, icon first Okay, so we can just give it something like this. Icons dot payment. Okay, and then we can have okay a size box. Okay, let me just show you guys what I'm actually doing. So I'm going to save this, and if I save it, I believe it shouldn't show at the bottom. Okay, see where it's showing right now. Okay, so let me just give it some padding. Okay, 20 should do and uh, give it a width uh, right so just take the width of the page okay that of contest okay I'm not gonna style this stuff much so this one should just do okay and that's it I can give it a color is there any need for a color mm, let's see if I can give it a light blue color okay just give it a color and let's say color dot light blue okay like so and save this and we should have a long rolling okay so this is actually the icon so i'm going to move this stuff now to the bottom instead of there so i'm just going to do inside this position i just set the bottom to be zero to move it to the bottom of the page all right so now we just stick it there it's not it just fixed there so it's not going to move even if you have a screw or a list view it's not going to move okay so now next i'm going to have a test and the test is just going to be like this so just have uh, pay with flutter wave or let's just say make payment so whichever way you can style it whichever way you want is your application so you should know what you want to do how you want to style it and all the stuff so this stuff is not uh, looking 
boot so let me just give it some style font size to be 20 and let me just give it a font weight okay sorry for that and uh, font weight dot boot okay so that should do and save it okay something is missing we can put this okay so now i can just give it some uh yeah let's just give it some main axis alignment to take it to the center uh, let me say space evenly okay yeah that should do all right so that should work so right now what i'm going to do now is just to add a gesture detector so whenever we tap on it we just call in the uh, the flutter wave payment gateway and everything will be set okay so just add the stuff with the gesture because i want to make it tapable so just add gesture detector here okay and uh, on tap so for now since we have not started doing any stuff there so i'll just leave it empty as it is okay so next we have this stuff okay so we have the button so this is the button now let me uh, build the ui real quick for test form feed and all the stuff okay so maybe i'm just going to skip this i'm just going to pause okay for now then once i build the test form feed i just display it to you all right okay so now i've created the two i've created the two test form feed one for receiving the email of the user and then the second one is for reducing um, receiving the amount that the user wants to pay okay so this is it i just wrap them inside a, a, a pattern pattern widget and then give it a pattern of 10 with a column and they have two children the column have two children which is one the container and the second one is also a container test form feed for amount and also for email okay so now i'm just going to i'm going to create their controllers real quick for retrieving their data from them okay so to retrieve the data that the user just inputted okay so we have test editing controller and this is going to be email okay so i'll change this one to amount okay all right so now we can pass it here so this one takes in the email which is the controller it takes in email and this one no nope, right here so we have another one so oops. all right so now we have the two tests to actually retrieve the data from the test Okay, so now inside this gesture detector, I'm going to try to retrieve those tests and I want to make sure that the both of them are not empty, okay? So I'll just create a final variable and call this one email and call it test form feed. No? Okay, so from the email, controller.test. Okay? All right, so I'll be able to get it from there and also get this one for amount. Okay, so we have amount dot test. So I want to make sure that those feeds are not empty. So we need to validate it. Okay, so I don't I don't know how you want to build your own app, but I'm just doing this one for example sake. Okay, so we just will have an if statement here. Okay, so if uh, the email dot is empty, all like the both of them must be filled. Like I want to make it mandatory. So if email dot is empty, all the uh, amount that is also empty then we can just throw or show a snack bar like calling scaffold messenger out of contest show snack bar and we can call our snack bar okay just call it test uh, feeds are empty All right, so I don't want this video to be long, but I think we are done with this part. Then else, if it is not empty, then we can just uh, proceed to, okay, to flutter wave payment. Yeah. 
okay so we can just bring out the flutter wave page for them to complete their transaction and all those stuff okay so i think this is good okay all right and uh, if i try to click on this stuff now you can see the uh, the scaffold come up feeds are empty which is the stuff are empty okay so now to get started and integrating the flutter wave we are going to go back to our web browser and right here i can go to the flutter wave uh, you can just go to pop the dev packages and then search for flutter wave so you're going to see this flutter wave currently this one this initial one is not does not support no safety as you can see and if i use it in my app it might not work okay so i tried it actually so it was given some issues all right so but if you have not yet migrated your flutter application to no safety then feel free to use this one you will have no issues with that okay but if you're already in no safety i think you are going to have some issues all right yeah so what i'm going to, what we're going to do we're just going to go use the, the pre-release so this one is actually the no safety version but it's still in beta okay so it's not yet in a stable release all right okay so this is the one we are going to be using and i'm going to go over to this installing tab and right here we can just okay add this stuff to our prospect of the ml file okay just copy this okay so we can go to prospect of the ml file and go down to dependency where we have cupertino icon and put that so now we can just run our flutter packages command all right okay and we move okay so that was fast okay remember this stuff is actually a plugin is not a package so it contains kotlin or java code it also contains swift code so we need to uh first of all kill our application oh my app is not showing so first of all we need to key the app okay so once you do that and uh, we can now rebuild it again to be sure that everything is stored correctly so i think we might encounter some errors here yeah but let's see so that we can all see how to solve that stuff so let me just give it some time to launch okay just give it some few minutes okay so while trying to run this stuff i encounter some errors and if you look at this it actually requires minimum sdk of version 16 okay of version at least version 19 but I'm, my current minimum SDK is 16. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go to our Android folder and go to app, build.gradu, and just increase your minimum SDK to 19. Okay, so nothing much there. Once you do it and rerun the app again. Okay, so everything worked fine. The app was running because I was actually expecting a different kind of error. Because I remember the first time I ran this stuff, I encountered some error like uh, there was a package that the Flutter developers, like this Flutter Wave developers used in, to develop this, pl this package, this plugin, sorry. And they included a package that does not support uh, no safety. So while trying to run it initially, it was telling me that this package does not support no safety. So we cannot run your application with sound no safety. So what I did then was to fix that issue was to run... Uh, I ran this command. I don't know if I can get it from here. And yeah, I ran this command. Flutter run, no sound, no safety, and that's that way the uh, the app was able to build and compile properly in my application. Okay, but right now it's not really showing that error. I don't know why, but we can still continue with that because I was I was actually expecting the error so that I show you how to fix that. But since it didn't show, we can use this method I showed you, this flutter on, no sound, no safety, in case you encounter such thing. Or you can still go to this, their view issues, and, okay, just click here, and it will take us to our issues page, and someone have already uh, complained about this stuff, which is no safety, uh, so we can just go here. Okay, so, and I think, okay. And go to it gives i think someone okay yeah this is actually the method you can use uh okay it was actually showing this error yeah triple this yeah triple this so it does not support no safety that's why so the another way you can fix this is just to add this flutter wave dot git so you can copy this stuff and add it here inside your 
prospect a gem of five. I'm only showing this assuming you have that error I'm, I'm talking about. But if you don't, then there's no need adding this stuff. So you can just add it like this and remove this one, okay? But since we didn't encounter that error, no issues, uh, we can just leave our app as it is, okay? So since it's working, you can just leave it as it, as it is, all right? So now I can just close this stuff here. I just wanted you guys to see how to do that. Okay, now I'm going to see how to integrate this stuff and the uh, the method is already here, so I'm not going to type everything from scratch. I'm just going to copy this code. Okay, so feel free to copy though. Okay, so we can just copy this. Okay. All right, I'm going to explain this stuff later. Let's just go back to our code. So what I'll do, okay, let me bring out my application first. Okay, so what I'll do here now is just to create a function, a method actually. So this method is going to be uh, make payment. And the function is going to receive, it's going to get, um, get uh, require an argument, which is a contest. So now I can just open, uh, create a new method and to just create a new method below. Okay, so now we have this method. So what I'm going to do is just to paste that code I copied, right, like so. And now I need to import this flutter wave. So you can just see what is happening here, basically. Uh, let me close this. Okay, so you can see what is happening here. Void make payment. This is the, the function to actually handle the payment and it takes a contest. Okay, but now we don't really need this contest as well. We also need to pass in the email of the user and also the amount because it's required here where you have the amount and also the email, the full name. So I'll just put anything there so it doesn't matter. The text reference, you can just put anything. So let's just do this. Or the text ref first, let me create the text ref reference that we're going to use. And then we are going to continue. So what I'm going to do now, down here, I'm just going to create a string and call it reference. Okay, ref is going to be, okay, ref. All right, so I'll just use maybe, uh, let's just create a simple function. Okay, call this one void, get ref, set ref, okay. All right, so we're going to call this method inside in its state. So I'll just call this if uh, platform dot, okay, uh, let's see, I guess I'm doing this properly. If platform dot is Android, so we can just get the reference like this, which is ref equals to Android ref. Okay, like so. So we can add numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's just going to be a string. Since I'm using no safety, I need to add the no, uh, yeah, the no operator there. No aware operator, okay, to fix that error. But if we are not using no safety, uh, remember to you call set state to actually review the state. Okay, call set state else. So let's say we are using iOS, we are running the stuff for iOS, we can just uh, give it the same thing. But now I'm going to change it this way to iOS reference. Okay, iOS ref, but this stuff needs to be changing dynamically, okay. Uh, you can just generate a random number here, yeah, if you want, because the reference needs to be unique from other pe person's own. So you can just generate a simple random number. So let's just call this one round. Okay, round. Okay, currently I'm just trying to create a random number, okay? So nothing much that is going on here. So make sure you import this stuff. Okay, import that dot mat. So this one, I think that duplicate. So I just remove this HTML one. We don't need that to fix that error, okay? So right now what I'm going to do is just to create, uh, okay, int variable. So I'll call this one, okay, number. And I'll call it round dot nest int. So we can just call this one 2000. Okay. Like so. Then now I just maybe in between this stuff, I will just uh, call this one. Okay, like this. And I'll just do something like this. 
and call number okay all right so we can also do the same thing here so this way we are all we are setting that the uh, the reference number will always be unique no matter what okay I didn't call set state so I also need to call set state all right and uh, this finally this ref set ref I'm going to call it inside the init state so that whenever this page reloads loads we are going to set the uh, get the random number and set it there okay just call init state and to do to do to do needs us so just do this stuff so I hope I'm not confusing you guys and, uh, okay so once we load this page it's going to get a reference and that's it all right so now we get have the reference which is the ref so right now what we are going to do now is inside this make payment i'm going to create some parameters that we are going to pass here first is the email of the user and uh, which is coming from this test when the user types it and secondly is the the amount and thirdly which is the ref so the ref i can just call it directly like so okay and uh, valid full name so you can just use the you can click click another feed to actually take the full name of the user but in this case i'll just use my name okay so it doesn't matter then the email address that you want to send the message to okay you made a transaction to a social person so the user needs to know so you can just create a test here email and also a string a string which is amount okay and now what i'm going to do import make sure you import this flutter wave sdk as well so just import this one the second one yeah okay right and the currency we can since i'm in nigeria i can just use naira in gn if you're in dollars you know you can just use dollars and all the stuff but i don't know if flutter wave actually supports us but i'm very certain that it supports african countries okay i'm very sure of that okay so here we're going to put in our encryption key and also our public key but i'm going to show you guys that later first let's uh, replace this stuff with our email address which is the email address here so just call email okay something is wrong okay we need to add this stuff okay since i'm using no safety all right so the phone number we can just leave this phone number like this but you can replace it to the phone number of your customer and is debug mode true so we are currently in debug but you want to, if you want to release release life so just change this stuff to force and also make sure you change you switch to life mode inside your dashboard your flutter wave dashboard okay but since we are in debug mode i'll just leave this stuff to be true email amount okay we have passed the amount the naira and everything is good so i also need to uh, import this one as well so this is actually where the response is coming from okay this stuff needs a sync okay so we can see this is actually handle error okay we are not actually handling any error let me just print out okay the error here in case there's any error you can do yours as a snack bar or whatever so this response is actually used to check if the transaction was successful or not okay so we can just check for if statement uh, let's see the uh, data is equal to null. that is the transaction was not successful then we can just print uh transaction fade or we can just print yeah transaction fade okay so to this is just a normal method of handling the error okay else we can just say that you can just perform whatever you want to do if it's to increment the value or you want to take the user to a page hey okay you successfully make the payment all the stuff so you can just take them there but in our case we are, i'm just going to print out the message and I'm going to print out response.message and also print out the response.status like so okay so this is it there's nothing much going on here so now what I need to do now is to get my encryption key and also my public key very important if not we won't be able to make this stuff but I'm seeing errors somewhere okay i need to terminate this stuff like so and also another one error somewhere too okay so now i need to pass in the email and the phone number so let me see the first one that comes in which is actually the email so pass in the email 
and dot trim so trim is used to remove white spaces before and after the test and then finally we have the amount so we can use dot trim too okay like so all right so they are all in form of string like that and now finally before we test the stuff i need to put my in encryption key and also my public key so to get that just go to your page stack dashboard and which is this and scroll down to settings okay the left hand side you see settings and just go down to api okay so now i have my public key my secret key my encryption key okay i'm not supposed to show you guys this stuff but okay just for practice purpose and this is actually the test key okay so i believe if you switch to live mode this public key and secret key will also change so you should also uh update it inside your flutter application as well all right so the flutter the public key i'm going to copy it and go back to my code so we have the public key here so i'm just going to paste it okay and then the secret key okay no the encryption key copy that as well so i'm going to paste it here too all right so i think that is all is there anything again okay so we can read through this phone number accept card payment through Okay, we want to accept card payment if you want to accept ussd payment you can also do that if you want to accept account payment you can also do that but i'm also i'm setting all to force so accept the rwanda, rwanda money this is if you are in rwanda okay but i'm not in rwanda i can just set it to force okay just leave it that way and pesa let's see if you can set this one to true okay so save this stuff and do a hot restart okay and let me bring up my application just do a hot restart and bring up your terminal as well okay okay so this was the error i was talking about package triplet is now like showing the error cannot run with sound no safety because the following dependency don't support no safety you see that was what i was talking about and it's, it keeps showing that error Keep showing that error so to do it just run your app using this method flutter run no safety sound and it should execute okay okay so what i'm going to do i'm just going to key this stuff and so i'm going to run it with flutter run no sound no safety and i just hope this one works and let's wait for it okay so the app is up and running right now so we're going to test that payment gateway again and uh, if i click this fields are empty so let's try to input our email address okay i also put the amount okay you can close this and click on it make payments all right so you can see now it's taking us to a new page secured by flutter wave so here now you can make your payment how would you like to pay so i want to pay with card because that's the only method i specified here which is true accept card payment to true okay so i don't know why this asset pesa payment is not working okay so once you click on pay with card and it's going to take us to this page card payment card number your month your year so assuming you're already in life mode you don't need to worry about this because your users already have their card so they will just input it and click on pay and this transaction everything will be made and then we can then check for the response here okay so if it's successful we can just do what we want to do okay so currently now to test this stuff out i'm going to use a test card so we have a test card here i can just go to okay so this is actually developer the flutterwave.com docs test card so i'm going to test with this test card so just copy this and we go back to our application uh yep okay so paste it in okay then the month let's see the month as well so the month is 9.32, okay, month and year. So you can just put it here. Month is 09, year 32, no, 32. And the CVV, which is 564, okay? So once you input that, uh, you can click on... Okay, let me show you something. What about the user just cancel the transaction? Okay, let me show you. So currently, let me just cancel this transaction ASAP. Is it gonna show ya? Okay, let me cancel this transaction and see. So I just press back, and 
the application finished. Something is wrong. Let's see. Okay, I just press back. Okay, so we have you can see we have this message here, which is receiver no. Uh, the getter data was called on no, so receiver no. Try calling data. So I think we have some issues here. So I'll just keep it like this. If response okay is equal to null, we can just ignore that stuff. Okay. If it's equal to null, we can just print transaction feed. Else, you can then check if you can just check if the response dot status okay is equal to sources. Okay, so if it's, if it's equal to success, saying we know that everything was correct, yep, you can just print out the status. Response of data, and also print out response of the message as well, okay? Else, then we know that something else went wrong. Yeah, error. Just print response. Like so. Okay. So now I think I there should be a way to do hot reload here. Yeah? Let's see. Uh, reload. Okay. Performing hot reload. Okay. So let's test this stuff again. I'm going to click here and then click cancel to see and should we have anything transaction feed okay now you see that the message now has been sent message that me response that message which is transaction feed now we know that the transaction did not uh was not successful that is the user did not um, perform the transaction so this way now we cannot perform any action we cannot send any data to the database or whatever okay but what about the user now performs the action correctly? So let's check that out. So I go to the card number. I'll put in the the okay the card details and uh, the month. Let's bring up my browser. So the month here is zero nine thirty two CVV, which will be five six four. Okay. All right, so now I can click on pay. You will be charged a total of 500 Naira to, do you wish to continue? Continue, yeah, I wish. So you just give it some time, initializing payment, and now we can now put the PIN, which is 3310, okay? So continue payment, and then an OTP, one-time PIN will be sent, okay? All right, so now we can now input this PIN, which is one, two, three, four, all right so once you input that page we should have a response in our application so let me just open this stuff to be sure that something comes up okay so click on it and once everything is successful to take us and here you can see that transaction charge successfully so that means this is where you're going to handle all your uh, success response and all those stuff to send to database you want to make any api call anything or whatsoever so this is actually where you're going to handle all the stuff transaction fetch successfully what about you want to enable ussd and also you want to enable account payment you just have to set this ussd to true and also set this account payment to true as well okay all right so now if we run hot reload because i'm using terminal so just press arrow and performing hot reload and now if you click on this make payment and you can see now we have three options you can pay with ussd and it's going to ask you for your bank name so since we're in nigeria we can just select a bank name and um, pay with ussd and it's just going, going, going to give it give us some ussd code that we need to dial in our phone to uh okay so dial this code below to complete the payment and payment code and this is it and once the payment is complete you press i have made a transfer okay and uh flutter wave is going to verify but i'm not really i still need to uh experiment on this ussd very well because even if i click on it it's still sending transaction fetch successfully okay so i don't know how they actually uh, check if the transaction was successfully 
behind okay but i'm just gonna check it and see if i can okay update this video so if you want to also pay with account and you can put in your bank name uh your account number and then pay with pay with account and everything will be we have seen how to create a flutter uh, flutter app that uses flutter wave as its payment gateway to receive payment from your customers your clients your users and all the stuff so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and if you want me to do something amazing put it in the comment section below whatever you want me to do and i'm going to do my research and probably create a video around that stuff you want me to do okay see you guys in the next video